We're gonna start. Uh, matter of fact, we're gonna start with you again, uh, Brother it. Daniel, and, and work our way back <laughs> down this time. So, what would you say are the biggest issues that men face in our community, and are they systematic or internal? And do we make things worse? Ooh, now Sherman, you know it's a slew, slew, slew of issues that we face. Um, <laughs> I know somebody's gonna comment on it, so I'll just throw it out there now. I would say one of the biggest issues that men face um, is just um, dealing with past traumas, and I would say one of one of the biggest ones is just your daddy issues. Um, as a young professional that works with young males of color, and you see it all the time. It's a conversation that we wind up having constantly in regards to the impact of not having a positive male role model in your life not having your father in your life or not, maybe not knowing who your father is, not having a, a good relationship with um, your father, um, how that impacts you coming up and how it can impact all your relationships going forward. And I got a feeling it's going to come up later, so I'll stop there. <laughs> okay. Appreciate it. Um, wow. Okay, to add on to that, um, I would also say, oh, wow. It's a whole bunch of things. It's hard to just pinpoint a couple, but I guess to add off to what Daniel said, um, having a father in your life that's not the role model you need. Mm. I think that's also like looking to men who are not the role models you need, but they're the role models that you have in front of you. Um, and then I think beyond that is just like as black men, the system of the systems that are created to just target us for being men. And then to see their ancestors spoke up. And now that we have this, like this empowerment, this, this basis and foundation to speak up for ourselves is also another way for us to get targeted. I think that, um, it's so much beyond, it's so much uh, added in with addition of what's systematic and then what we go through internally. And then that's my piece right there. Thank you. Well, Sherman, I think first of all, you say, we, we gotta say it's systematic because we know about, especially for black men, we know about slavery. We know how it, it, it goes all the way back to, you know, 1619 and forward. And so even now, as we deal with uh, uh, the issues of just being black in America. We, we deal with, you know, the George Floyds and all the stuff we see and we internalize it and it devalues us over time. And so, well, so often we find that we have to continually refill ourselves in places where maybe our white counterparts don't have to do it. And so, but, but leading it back to what we're saying, we we're talking about fathers is that we have to understand we are, we are dealing with fathers who have gone through that and so for various reasons and various issues that they, you know, they are, they are, they are there or not there, or partially there or, or just, you know, just not around. But I think all those pieces uh, come together. But I, I want to also kind of go in a little deeper and say that I think as men we have to also understand that it's not just our mental health; it's the mental health of all of our young brothers around us. Mm. And so, how do we make sure that not just they're that we're okay? that they're okay also, because when they become okay, guess what, they feed back into you and you become okay. Appreciate that. Yeah. I forget the whole question, but I see the word issues, so I think I got <laughs> it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna leave the fatherhood piece alone for now, and I, but I think one of the two things that I'm thinking about is stigma, you know, around mental health related issues and men in general. In fact, I was just meeting with a young guy yesterday and he, he's having some mental health issues and he kind of danced around, oh, I know I can go get therapy or whatever, but I don't really think I need it. I'm like, yo, it's nothing wrong with it. Now, so I had to, I had to um, de, what did I say? It's not demystify, but j just take the shame away from seeking help um, around therapy. And I think the fact that I was another black man that it helped him realize, oh, it's normal, it's okay. And I, I think now more than ever, it's, it's a lot more normal than it might've been in the past, but I think just the, the stigma. Um, and also, you know, another issue is just asking for help, mm. right? So th this brother came down, we talked for a minute, and he, you know, he didn't necessarily say he needed help with mental health issues. I, I can't help him anyway, because I, I ain't a mental health professional, <laughs> but, but just having conversations and letting somebody else, I need help because I know other people or other programs that he needs to get plugged into. Um, but just reaching out for help, I think is, is an issue sometimes. Cool, thank you. Hmm. Oh man, they said a lot. Um, in the shower, I was listening to Plies featuring Kevin Gates and it's called All of the Above. Uh, <laughs> so I wanna say it is all of the above. Um, it is uh, systemic or structural and I think for many people, 
if you do not uh, grow up with any type of knowledge of that, it's hard to give it that place. Mm. And because we grow up in uh, America and uh, we have uh, rugged individualism, you know what I'm saying? We look for it to be put solely on our backs. And I think that goes for uh, just being a man, period. Yeah. Um, it, it seems like the final buck stuck with us. And so even though uh, all of these different factors are in the way, we just uh, put it on our back. Um, also, um, there's a quote. Um, I think I heard it uh, from Will Smith once. But he said, although it's not our fault, it's our responsibility to take care of. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, and that... Uh, idea of accountability um, is very nuanced and I think that um, growing up in America again it goes into pointing on the individual and uh, how do we have a nuanced conversation um, where it is uh, there's a spectrum of there's responsibility and actions that we can take and that we can improve ourselves but then how does it go up the ladder to now we have community so like when I think of self-care or um, taking care of yourself, you know, I think uh, people kind of overdo it and it's put people into like these silos mm. of trying to take care of themselves. And I think we lose uh, how we're supposed to heal as a community. And, um, and uh, because of uh, the systemic pressures that have been uh, brought upon the black community and has uh, broken us down, many of uh, my generation and younger, uh, we forget, or we have never known how when uh, my parents and grandparents, how the neighborhood helped each other out, how your neighbor mm. could give you a whooping, or they could uh, help take you to the hospital if you needed to, or they can, you know what I'm saying? So that sense of, of community and being able to help out uh, is lost. Um, in, in many ways. And so how do we go and look at the full spectrum, take responsibility for what we, we can do, but then start to open the conversation of, there are some issues that we cannot handle on our own. Oh. And how do we as a team start to uh, creatively and strategically uh, move forward so that we can solve these problems? Because it is, it is uh, so possible for us to solve and I serve a very big God Amen. and I know that together that we can do these things if we can look at it from a new perspective. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that.